Welcome all. Good to see you. Let's, um, <clears throat> let's turn, please, to 1 Corinthians chapter 1. And uh, <clears throat> I wanted to speak today about how uh, I titled this Wisdom Cries Out. And here in Corinthians, we see Paul writing to the church at Corinth, and uh, he's encouraging them. The, he's, he's also uh, praising them that, that they have the ability to grow in the Lord and to see amazing things. And we see here in 1 Corinthians 1 verse 3, he says, Grace be unto you and peace from God our Father and from the Lord Jesus Christ. I thank my God always on your behalf for the grace of God which is given you by, by Jesus Christ, that in everything you are enriched by him in all utterance and in all knowledge. And so he's, he, he's bringing out that in, in all these ways, you're enriched. You are, you are growing, and, and, and this is exciting. And, and so we think of ourselves as well. We think that this is the Lord's desire for us in the Lord, that grace and peace be abounding in our life, as we heard in the gifts, like, that, um, like the reflection of trees on, on, the, on the lake, as we heard in the gifts, that that peace is to be shining out from us. And, uh, and that the Lord wants us to be enriched in, in, in all utterance, in all knowledge. And that's pretty exciting. Even as, the testi- even as the testimony of Christ was confirmed in you. So that you come behind in no gift waiting for the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. And again, just he's telling the church that you can abound and you can grow in the gifts of the Spirit. and 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 just press on in the lord this is exciting he's trying to bring out who shall also confirm you unto the end that you may be blameless in the day of our lord jesus christ god is faithful by whom you were called into the fellowship of his son jesus christ our lord and so each each of the same uh encouragements that paul gives to the church at corinth as we read this letter and we quote often from, from Corinthians and from 1 Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. There's so many amazing scriptures in there that, that we hold on to and, and rejoice in. Uh, let's just go now to chap- chapter 2, please. Verse 13. And again, just bringing out the points where Paul is saying to the church, grow in my ways. You have tremendous potential. Be excited about it and and let the Lord use you. Grow in the gifts of the Spirit and and just in all aspects of the Spirit of God, grow. And so verse 13, Paul says, chapter 2, 1 Corinthians 2, 13. What things also we speak, not in the words which man's wisdom teacheth, but that which the Holy Ghost teacheth, comparing spiritual things with spiritual. But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. But he that is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is judged of no man. For who has known the mind of the Lord, that he may instruct him? But we have the mind of Christ. So Paul's saying to the saints there in Corinth, Do you realize you have the mind of Christ? The Spirit of God dwells dwells within you. Let the Holy Spirit teach you. Let this wisdom cry out to us each day and be led of the Spirit. The the Spirit of God dwells in us. We have the mind of Christ. The Lord wants to teach us each day. But we have that choice. We always have that choice what we're going to do if we're going to listen to the Spirit of God. And I I think of myself when, when I came to the Lord. I was 20 years old. And uh, kind of wondering about life, wondering what, uh, what direction my life was going to go. All of a sudden, I hear the gospel. I hear the amazing promises that are in the scriptures that the Lord wants to, to give me each day. And I realized I had a choice. I realized, okay, I was at, down in Australia at the time, and I was planning to stay in Australia for 10 months. That would have been exciting. And um, 
And, and here I am, received the Holy Spirit like a, a month and a half into my trip. And I'm thinking, what, am, I've, what do I do now? All of this wisdom was all of a sudden within me. I've got the mind of Christ and the Spirit of God teaching me to say, well, Ward, what are you going to do? Are you going to follow me? Or are you just going to be a 20-year-old hitchhiker going around Australia? And, uh, and so I realized I had that choice. And I thought Jesus Christ was going to return any day. And I thought, I got to get home. I got to tell my friends and relatives, Jesus is coming back. This was in 1983, by the way. And, uh, and so I stayed in fellowship for, it was like, uh, it was like a month total. And then I took off back to Canada to tell my friends and relatives, Jesus lives, thinking every one of them will want to come to the Lord. Well, I was wrong, but my attitude was right <laughs> to want to preach the gospel. I wasn't wrong to go home or anything, but I look back and think, wow, that would be exciting to stay so many months in fellowship. But praise the Lord. So we have this incredible opportunity, just as the church at Corinth did, to grow in the Lord, but we have to choose to. So go to chapter 14 of Corinthians. And in... In verse 12, this one verse here, uh, Paul says, Even so, for as much as you are zealous of spiritual gifts, seek that you may excel to the edifying of the church. This this word gifts is in italics, and it's actually saying um, that for as much as you are zealous of spiritual of spirituals of of the things of the spirit so they are they were obviously a church really excited about being filled with the holy ghost and they probably loved to tell people about it paul could see their zealousness but at the same time can you see that he's trying to shape them he's trying to say okay you're excited about the things of the spirit that's awesome now now I want to you, you to use this excitement for your brothers and sisters, for the body of Christ, so that it's, you're not just focused on you and yourself um, growing in spiritual things, but you're using that to reach others. And so in the United States today and around the world, there are many people filled with the Holy Spirit. And there's churches out there that are putting on classes and and they call them things like uh, um, spiritual training and come and learn about the gifts that you have and, and, and they're holding classes and people are rushing to this class and to that class and to this church and that church because they're filled with the Holy Spirit and they want to grow but sadly, the instruction that they're getting is, is not the full gospel. It's only part of the gospel. And we have to make sure that in our desire to grow in the things of the Spirit, we're receiving the entire gospel and wanting to make a stand for that gospel that is sound and, and decent and orderly to this world and filled with the power of the Holy Ghost but willing to listen to the Lord's instruction. Sadly, what ends up happening in many churches is that people go from one church to another. They never get grounded. And, uh, and yes, they, they might be hearing about spiritual things, but because they never receive the fullness of the gospel, it's, the growth is stunted and, and, and they aren't growing. And people are hearing a lot of warped doctrines out there too. So let's go to Proverbs chapter 4, please. We're going to come back to Corinthians in a, in a while. I mentioned the title of this talk is Wisdom Cries Out. And here in Proverbs 4, verse 5, it says here, Get wisdom, get understanding, forget it not, neither decline from the words of my mouth. So the scriptures are telling us to cry out for wisdom, 
to have a desire, this hunger. Remember how Paul said to the church at Corinth, you're zealous of spiritual things, and that's good. But we have to be zealous to grow in wisdom with that desire to grow in the things of the Spirit. So we let the Lord te teach us at all times. So he says, uh, uh, forsake her not, and she shall preserve thee, meaning wisdom shall preserve thee. Love her, and she shall keep thee. Wisdom is the principal thing, the main thing. Therefore, get wisdom, and with all thy getting, get understanding. So I hear at 20 years old, I mentioned I received the Spirit in, in Australia. I went back home only after being only in, in fellowship for a month. So I was really new. I really didn't know a whole lot at all. And um, I would listen to talks on, on the Walkmans. Remember the Walkmans for the oldies out there? And uh, um, I, that would be my, my meeting. I'd listen to talks. And, but as I was listening to talks and hearing how important fellowship is and growing with brothers and sisters and encouraging each other, this was like wisdom crying out to me. And there was no fellowship where I was. It was in Toronto at the time, just outside. And I realized I've got to, uh, I got to be in fellowship and I just can't be on my own. Of course, none of my friends or relatives wanted to follow the Lord. They took me to counselors and that tried to convince me that what I'd received, the Holy Spirit was, uh, was, was just a phase in my life. And one of my admired teachers in my school came over one day and he said, Ward, now listen, this is just a phase. You're young and you've got your life ahead of you. And, and um, he tried to convince me that, that, um, that I was going overboard. But praise the Lord, I went overboard for the Lord and uh, left the old ways behind. And, but this idea of wisdom was crying out to me. Wisdom is the main thing. And it's the wisdom of God that the Lord wants us to grow in. Um, exalt her and she shall promote thee. She shall bring thee honor. And when thou, when thou dost embrace her, she shall give to thine head an ornament of grace, a crown of glory shall she deliver to thee. So if we allow ourselves to grow in, in wisdom, in the word of God, we will grow in the Lord. And we'll grow in the Lord with the right perspective. Praise the Lord. Just skip over to chapter 8 in Proverbs. And... Uh, Verse 1, doth not wisdom cry? This is where I sort of got this, this talk idea, wisdom crying out. Doth not wisdom cry out? And understanding put forth her voice. She stands in the top of high places by the way, in the places of the paths. She crieth at the gates, at the entry of the city, at the coming in at the doors. And just it goes on to mention just different places, basically. Everywhere you go, God's wisdom. And of course, we know that the scriptures say that in Jesus Christ are hid all the treasures of wisdom and knowledge. So this crying out of wisdom is, is actually our Lord and Savior crying out to pe pe people in this world to say, will you listen to my word? Will you follow me? Will you humble yourself? And, and uh, instead of living for you only, will you live for for me, the one who gave his life for each one of us. And uh, so skip down to verse 7. For my mouth shall speak truth, and wickedness is an abomination to my lips. All the words of my mouth are in righteousness. There is nothing froward or perverse in them. And so, so this clarifies too. The wisdom we're speaking about is the word of God. It speaks of righteousness, truth, growing in these ways, turning away from wickedness. They are all plain to him that understand it and right to them that find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than treat chief, uh, choice gold. I love this next verse. For wisdom is better than rubies walking in the ways of jesus christ is better than rubies and all the things that thou may be desired that may be desired 
are not to be compared to it. We've received the spirit of Jesus Christ. We've received wisdom. There is nothing in this world that compares to what we have. Nothing more valuable. We have to hold on to Jesus Christ so tightly. When I was with my Walkman, listening to talks and singing choruses and hearing about I need to be in fellowship, the closest fellowship was Santa Barbara, California. And I was on the east, I was in Toronto East Side, Ontario. And, and so I was wisdom crying out to me. Again, it's like, okay, Ward, what are you going to do now? You're filled with my spirit. Are you going to just stay there? Or are you going to help my people? Are you going to grow? Wisdom crying out. I knew I had to make a choice. I knew I had to move to California. It's the place you ought to be. If you haven't seen the hillbillies, Beverly Hillbillies. And uh, so I moved. Praise the Lord. Go to uh, chapter 9, Proverbs. Chapter 9 and verse 8. Give instruction to a wise man, and he will yet, and he will be yet wiser. Teach a just man, and he will increase. In learning for the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding and and so here we see again the challenge wisdom crying out if we're gonna grow in the Lord the only way we grow is is by letting the Lord teach us receiving that instruction like I was receiving the importance to be in fellowship. I knew I had to make a choice. I knew wisdom was crying out to me to say, go, be with my people. No one was wanting to listen to the gospel where I, where I was. I was very young in the Lord. I needed to learn. And, and so I moved to California. And if we allow the Lord to teach us, we take that instruction and we, and we respond to it. That's how we grow in the Lord. Chapter 4, back there. just wanted to bring out one point here. I was reading this week and, and just really thinking about wisdom, thinking about this idea of wisdom crying out. And, and you can read Proverbs and you start thinking, yeah, yeah, Lord, that's what I want to do. I want to grow in wisdom. I really want to grow. And, and, and then the thought comes to my mind, well, how do I know I'm growing in wisdom? And uh, I'm reading the word, but how do I know I'm growing? And so I was, I was reading down in verse 20. Is that right? No, sorry, verse 12. Uh, oh, wait, I'm sorry. Verse 14. <laughs> I was reading the wrong one. Enter not into the path of the wicked, and go not in the way of evil men. Avoid it, pass not by it, turn from it, and pass away. For they sleep not except they have done mischief, and their sleep is taken away unless they cause some to fall. For they eat the bread of wickedness and drink the wine of violence. But the path of the just is as the shining light that shineth more and more unto the perfect day. And so I was asking myself the question, well, how do I know I'm growing in wisdom? And there's so much in Proverbs that say if we receive wisdom, at the same time, we're going we're gonna to avoid the paths of the wicked. We're going to stay away from evil things. And if we get trapped in some way and we realize, oh, I'm not in a good place here, and we realize it and we turn from it and repent, and we get, get back on track, then we're listening to wisdom. So if we see ourselves turning away from the things that are wrong in this world, we're walking in wisdom. If we see ourselves doing that, even in little things, even in just the thoughts of our mind, a thought gets in your mind and you realize, oh, I don't want to be thinking that. And, and just the ability to say in our minds, I don't want to be thinking that, Lord. I want, to, I want my mind on you. Thank you, Lord, for helping me 
Thank you, Jesus, for guiding me. Thank you for your wisdom crying out to say, hey, don't be thinking those things. As we recognize that and we change, we make steps to change just in the thoughts of our mind. And we see that we should be praising the Lord. We should be saying, whoa, that's exciting. I'm growing in wisdom because I'm, I'm making a step in my life to avoid the evil path. And uh, if you're, there's times where I might be at work or somewhere and, and uh, some of the guys at work, they might be talking about things that aren't edifying and, and um, or maybe it's, I'm at someone's house and I'm repairing their fridge and, and that's what I do. I repair refrigerators and, and they start speaking in ways that are start cussing or something. And something says in my mind, say they've made me upset, right? Say they've said something that upsets me. Okay. And something says in my mind, well, you, you speak back to them the same way. Right. And, and immediately I recognize, uh, uh that's not me. I don't talk like that. That guy died a long time ago <laughs> in the waters of baptism. I don't want to speak like that. And so I speak with grace, with honor, with respect, no matter who the person is, and, uh, and try to make a stand for the Lord. And by doing that, I'm listening to wisdom. And I'm, I'm showing people that, that I want to stand for righteousness and what is true. Praise the Lord. And so if we ever ask ourselves that question, how do I know if I'm growing in wisdom? If you're making a stand against evil and changing things in your life to do what is right, then hallelujah, you're growing in wisdom. You are, you are uh, doing what the Lord asks us to do and being a blessing to others and, and, and being a, that shining light as we heard in the gifts that people will see and see we're different. Praise the Lord. So let's go back to 1 Corinthians chapter 3. And I'm, I mentioned that Paul said incredible things to the church at Corinth. There's uh, great words of instruction. To, he, he said to, to, to the Corinthians. And, but at the same time, I'm sure we're all familiar, the Corinthian church had big problems, major problems. And so Paul was writing to the church, and in his writings is wisdom crying out. Saying, okay, brothers and sisters, you're zealous for the things of the Spirit? That's, that's fantastic. Great. Now listen, I have some wisdom for you to, to listen to. And you need to receive this wisdom and get understanding from it and knowledge and respond and change. If you don't change, it's going to be pretty horrible. Um, so in chapter 3, verse 1, it says, And I, brethren could not speak unto you as unto spiritual, but as unto carnal, even as unto babes in Christ. I have fed you with milk and not with meat, for hitherto you were not able to bear it, neither yet now are you able. Sort of implying that he's got a lot of things to teach them about the things of the Lord, but in order to grow, they need to do some changing. He says in verse 3, for you are yet carnal, for whereas there is among you envying and strife and divisions, are you not carnal and walk as men? While one saith, I am of Paul, and another, I am of Apollos, are you not carnal? And so in the church at the time, there were people saying, oh, Paul's my man, I'm following him. Others were saying, no, I'm following Apollos. Others, no, I'm following Peter. And there is division in the church. And, and Paul was describing this as carnal. He was saying, don't be carnal. And this word carnal is interesting. It just means uh, to let our human nature guide us and not the Holy Spirit. So to be led by the flesh, as we often say. So let, let our own understanding guide us. So their own understanding was saying, I'm following Paul. If you're going to follow Peter, you're not my brother or sister. Perhaps they were saying something like that. And there is division there. 
And so the instruction to us is, here we are, we're, we're like the church at Corinth. We're filled with the Holy Ghost, excited. We want to grow. We want to grow in wisdom. We want to hear that cry of wisdom. <clears throat> and now we have to also hear a warning. And the warning is don't be carnal. Don't be filled with envy, strife, and divisions. <clears throat> don't allow things to uh, um, come against us and the Lord and his people. Like Paul saying, saying here, warning them, I have great things to teach you, but if you're carnal and being led by your own understanding, you can't hear what I'm saying. And so let's go to Romans 8, verse 5. Wait, yeah, Romans 8, verse 5. <clears throat> For they, verse 5. For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh. We could also say, for those who are carnal, following our carnal nature, our natural nature, not being led by the Spirit, so our mind just telling us things. Um, uh, okay, so for they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. Praise the Lord. So the Holy Ghost is speaking to us constantly. And we have to be listening. <clears throat> if we're feeling upset towards a brother or sister or about some situation, we need to look at it through the lens of the Word of God. Look at it through the lens of, I love my brother. I love my sister. I'm going to pray for them to, to grow in the Lord and to be strengthened. And I'm going to do all I can to help them. No bitterness whatsoever in my heart toward anybody in the Lord. And... Um, Praise the Lord. Uh, he says, for to be carnally minded is death. To be, to be just led by our natural understanding without the Holy Spirit listening to the Spirit of God. There's a huge warning there. I'm sure you can see it. Death. But to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Okay, that's where I want to go then. Life and peace. That's my desire. I want, I want to be filled with the life and peace of the Lord. So in order for, for that to happen, then I have to say to myself, okay, Lord, I'm not going to listen to the carnal nature. I'm going to allow my carnal nature to be, to be intertwined with the spirit of the living God because I'm spirit-filled. And Holy Ghost, you guide me. Jesus, you guide me. God Almighty, you guide me. Praise the Lord. And so. Uh, Verse 7, because the carnal mind is enmity against God. For it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then you are not in the flesh, oh, sorry, so that they that are in the flesh cannot please God. If we're, if we're allowing our own carnal nature to lead us, not listening to the Spirit of God, it does not please the Lord. So verse 9, you are not in the flesh, but in the Spirit. If so be that the Spirit of God dwell in you. Now, if any man have not the Spirit of Christ, he's none of his. And uh, so praise the Lord. This is such, such an amazing uh, jewel of wisdom here, crying out to each one of us to say, listen to my Spirit. You hear all the things that are going on in, in, in the world today, especially the United States. Uh, businesses being burnt and the protests and and the anger and the hate, and, and you hear it all. And part of you wants to think, okay, where do I go? Where do I go protest? So part of me says that. Where do I go stand up? And then I think to myself, oh, praise the Lord. And we listen to the Spirit. The answer is the wisdom of God. The answer is Jesus Christ. The answer is get out there and preach the gospel. That's what people need to hear. The people that are, that are burning things down and everything, and all the anger and the hate, they need their life infused with the love of God. And wow, what a, what a different nation, what a different world it would be if, if, uh, if nations were all of a sudden receiving the gospel. I, mean, I, I don't... I don't necessarily, I don't expect that to happen because there's so much unbelief out there and so much resistance, but 
But can you imagine what a life it's going to be? That's going to be like when the Lord comes back. When the Lord comes back, that's, that's, where, that's where our hope is. That's where our answer is. He's going to change everything. And in the meantime, uh, I just want to pray for the people that are, that are involved in these riots and the anger and the hate that somehow the Lord would break through to them and they'd hear the true gospel. And they'd, and they'd want to come to the Lord and they'd, they'd want to be filled with the Holy Ghost and, and uh, shine forth the love of God out of their life to, to people around them. Praise the Lord. And, and that, that helps me just to, just to redirect my mind on the Lord and, and, and just keep the whole situation in prayer, whether it's COVID or riots and all that, just keeping everything to the Lord in prayer and wanting to be used of the Lord to preach the gospel. Praise the Lord. And that's, that's wisdom crying out. Wisdom crying out to me to say, all right, Lord, this is the answer. The answer to all I'm seeing in the world today is, is, is one. And there's one name, and the name is Jesus Christ, and his name is victory. And I just need to stand for him to whoever I speak to. Praise the Lord. And, and I, I want to have opportunities more to preach the gospel. Praise the Lord. Okay, uh, Romans 15, skip over there. Romans 15, verse 25. Oops, I'm in the wrong book. Romans 15. So thinking of this idea of carnal, in Romans 15, verse 25, Paul writing here. He says, But now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. For it has pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. It hath pleased them verily, and their debtors they are. For if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. When therefore I have performed this and have sealed to them this fruit, I will come by you into Spain. So Paul's saying that the Gentile saints that lived outside of Jerusalem in the area that he was, he was in heard that the, the saints in Jerusalem who were poor needed help financially, and they wanted to help. They wanted to um, be a blessing to them. And notice how in the end of verse 27, Paul says that if the Gentiles have been made partakers of their spiritual things, their duty is also to minister unto them in carnal things. So the Gentiles received the gospel or the things of the Spirit through what the Lord had started in Jerusalem and the gospel going out and everything. So spiritually, the Gentiles, they they. They were blessed by coming to the Lord and getting saved, um, by obeying the gospel, Acts 2.38, obeying that. And, uh, and Paul was saying, they're excited about the walk, their walk in the Lord, but they're also hearing the cry of wisdom to help their brothers and sisters in carnal things. Isn't that interesting? That it uses the word carnal. It uses the same word that, we are told to be careful of, to not be carnal in our nature, to not just be led by the carnal uh, na nature, saying that if we see a need around us, we should reach out and help our brothers and sisters. And so the warning of, of not being carnal, not allowing our, our carnal mind to lead us, is, is not saying we don't help others and, and we don't care about others. We, we care very much and we want to be a blessing in the things of the Spirit and also carnally, carnally in a good way, carnally to encourage pe people to grow in the Lord as the Gentile saints strengthened the church at Jerusalem. And so, oh, and this next verse is, is incredible. I love it. Verse 29, and I am sure that when I come unto you, I shall come in the fullness 
of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. Whoa, listen to that verse. That is how the Lord wants us to be every day, wherever we go. Wherever you go, think to yourself, okay, I'm, I'm going here. Say you're going to visit a friend. You are going in the fullness of the blessing of the gospel of Christ. You are desiring to, to have that fullness pouring forth from you to be a blessing to them. If it's a brother or sister in the Lord, to strengthen them, to encourage them. We're all able to. We all have a testimony. We all have a word of encouragement to, uh, to be that, that person coming in the fullness of the blessing of Jesus Christ. Hearing wisdom in all we do. Wanting to bless. And if it's someone who's in the world, here we are. We're standing there in the fullness of the blessing in Jesus Christ. Preaching the gospel. Telling them about repentance. Telling them about baptism. Being filled with the Holy Spirit. And how to follow the Lord. Praise the Lord. So, so many ways the church at, at Corinth needed help. When you, when you read 1 Corinthians, you read about contentions in the church. There was envy, strife, divisions. There was fornication as well. And, and one person was having a relationship with his father's wife. And, and I'm sure there are others as well. And they were, they were looking to the law, to man's law, to, to resolve disputes amongst brothers and sisters when, when the church could have handled it. And uh, there's others where they were not considering the weak saints and doing things where they were uh, eating things sacrificed to idols and, and, um, and, and just not keeping in mind uh, saints in the Lord that, that, aren't, uh, that are weak in the Lord. There was also the gifts of the Spirit. You read about in Corinthians 14, they were all out of order, and Paul was saying, saying to them to, to operate the gifts orderly. All these things in the church at Corinth were, were upside down. And praise the Lord that we have this book to read because it gives us a lot of correction and a lot of direction and tremendous hope. Not too long ago, my sister got married. And when she got married, it was in Canada. And at the wedding, they were speaking about love and the love of their, of their relationship and how beautiful it is. And, and they're, they're still happily married now, which is great. But they read 1 Corinthians 13 at their wedding. And I thought, oh, wow, this is, this is a fantastic chapter. And I just wish they knew what it meant that... This is the love of God that's being spoken about in Corinthians chapter 13. This is the love that we need to show each other and to show this world. And, and they're happily married, but there could be so much more in their life if, if they had Jesus Christ. And so many people are, are, are taking bits and pieces from Corinthians that are great, beautiful instruction, wisdom crying out, and yet not following the Lord. So many people, as I mentioned, go into all these uh, classes all over the con country and all over the world, how to be spiritual, but they're not preaching the gospel. They're not telling people, you must repent. You must be baptized, full immersion. You must receive the Holy Ghost. You will speak in tongues, and you must follow the Lord and live righteously. So many are not. They're just enjoying their experience of having the Holy Ghost, and having the power of the Holy Ghost, yet preaching half a gospel. And when the Lord comes back, the scriptures say that people will come to say, we've done miracles in your name and wonders, but the Lord will say, I've never known you. Such a, such a beautiful book, Corinthians and 2 Corinthians. Incredible uh, guidance for us. But it's wisdom crying out. Paul saying to them, okay, here's all the things that are wrong. Will you change? Do you, will you change? How much do you love the Lord? I've pointed all these things out. It's like if the Lord points out things in our life and says, okay, you've got this area you need to grow in. Do we say, not me. I don't need to grow in that. I'm fine. But we know it's the Lord is saying, yes, you do need to grow in that. Um, 
we have to be humble to say, all right, Lord, I want to grow. Go to 2, 2 Corinthians chapter 7, please. I can remember in my life thinking of big decisions that we have to make. And, and uh, I came to a point in my life where I was thinking of getting married. And, uh, and, but the examples that I had seen in my walk in the Lord weren't, weren't very good examples of marriage because I was in a very small fellowship in Santa Barbara and there was, only, there was only myself and two other people. And that was it for a while. And uh, so it was the three of us. At one time there was six, but then it went down to three. And so I was thinking of getting married. And so wisdom crying out, right? Who do you, who do you marry? And uh, you got the, the worlds there saying, oh, there's this person, there's that person, and she likes you, and, and all these things. And as time went by, and eventually I moved to Fresno, where there, where there was brothers and sisters, and Pastor David and Alice had moved over at that time. And, uh, and just I was thinking more about along these lines, and, and my, my, my wife was coming to meetings at that time. And, but I could see a really good example of a relationship, Pastor Dave and Alice. And um, I can remember walking, walking with Pastor Dave. And we, 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 we were having a, a camp at Yosemite. And um, at that time, I was uh, dating or courting, whatever you want to say, my wife. And, um, and Pastor Dave and I, we, we went for a walk around the campground talking about marriage and relationships and all these things. And another time I spoke to Pastor David and Alice by themselves um, about it. And I could see in them a good example of marriage. And, and, I, and I could see that it's a good thing. Because I, I, I got to the point where I was thinking, hmm, maybe I don't want to get married. And, uh, but Pastor Dave was, was encouraging me and just showing me the positive things about it in, in, uh, from the Word of God. And their example of a happy marriage, too, was, 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 was exciting. And so wisdom crying out, right? I realized I had to make a decision. I wanted to find someone in the Lord, spirit-filled, following Jesus Christ. And, and by their advice, they were directing me that those are good desires. And keep them like that. Keep them God first. And as we heard in the gifts, um, not forsaking our first love, keeping Jesus Christ first. And my wife and I got married. And praise the Lord. The Lord's helped us tremendously. My wife's going through a tough time now. But, uh, but I know the Lord's giving her the victory and is going to. So anyway, wisdom crying out. Go to 2 Corinthians 7. I think I told you that. And... Uh, so with all this instruction that the Lord told, or that Paul told the church at Corinth, 2 Corinthians 7, verse 8, it says, For though I made you sorry with a letter, I do not repent, though I did repent, for I perceive that the same epistle hath made you sorry, though it were for but a season, were but for a season. So he's talking about the 1 Corinthians. He wrote them that letter to, to correct them, to instruct them. He said, look, I made you sorry. I gave you wisdom. Wisdom was crying out, verse 9. Now I rejoice, not that you were made sorry, but that you sorrowed to repentance. For you were made sorry after a godly manner, that you might receive damage by us in nothing. So they received this instruction and they repented. They realized, whoa, okay, we're doing things wrong. We've got to change. We've got to get right. We've got to hear the cry of wisdom and run our meetings orderly. And anyone that's uh, being immoral in their life, they need to be out of fellowship. We need to have a holy church. We need to love one another. No divisions. Verse 9, for 10, or verse 10. For godly sorrow worketh repentance to salvation, not to be repented of. But the sorrow of the world works death. <clears throat> For behold, the selfsame thing that you sorrowed after a godly sort. What carefulness it wrought in you. Yea, what clearing of yourselves. What indignation, yea, and what fear. Yea, what vehement desire. Yea, what zeal and what revenge. In all things you have appro approved yourselves. 
to be clear in this matter. So they received Paul's instruction and and they repented of the things that were going wrong. And they realized, hey, we're we're really just following our the carnal way here. We're not letting the spirit lead lead us. Hey everybody, let's change. They probably got all the saints together, read Paul's letter, and said, All right, this is what our brother Paul says. We must change. And everyone got behind that. And and so they they sorrowed after a godly sort. They allowed the Spirit of God to lead them to grow. They listened to the cry of wisdom. And so in closing, that's all, as brothers and sisters, in in our life. Be excited that all the amazing things we see in the Word of God are directed to each one of us. It's wisdom crying out. And and what are we going to do with it daily? In every thought we have, in every way we think about brothers and sisters, or how we see the situation in this world, Wisdom is crying out to us to make good, godly choices. If we make the bad choice, we get it right and and get back on track. Let's listen to the wisdom of the Lord always, all the people said.